Hello everybody, today we are going to set up the ATP 3450 to run Linux mode and Python scripts so we can run all the tests we want without needing to use a laptop at all. The first thing we need to do is plug in the ATP 3450 to power and to the laptop or computer that you're using and open waveforms. So we do need a computer but just to start and just to set it up. We go up to Settings, Device Manager, select the ATP 3450 and click the Boot option. And then we select Linux mode and hit Apply and Reboot. If you wait a few seconds for it to turn on, it will take about 30 seconds in Linux mode to start up. Once it's listed in waveforms, we can use the terminal in Mac OS or Linux or putty in Windows to connect to the serial terminal on the ADP 3450. On Mac OS and Linux, we do ls slash dev slash tty dot start. That will show us the list of devices available. We can then use screen to connect to this um, using board rate 115200. We might need to enter here to see a prompt and then we see a login for which the username is Digilent and the password is also Digilent. In Windows you can right click the start button, select device manager, look at the section ports, you should see one device listed in there and that should be your ADP 3450. Open PuTTY and in the IP address space type in COM5 or whatever COM number that you just found and type in the board rate of 115200 as well. Press connect and you will be greeted with the serial terminal, same as we are here. Now we're ready to start writing some code. First thing I'm going to do is to set up our imports. Here we're importing C types so that we can load the Digilint waveforms library. We're also going to import some of the Python imports such as platform and path. Here we set it up so that it loads the file correctly, depending on which platform you're on. The next step is to connect to the device. Here we create a function called openADP, which opens the first available device that it finds. Here we set up a handle, which is a handle to the device so that we know where to talk to the device. And then we call this fdwf device config open function uh, from the dwf sdk library. We pass it in the handle as an argument so that it knows where to write the handle to so we can address the device in the future. If the handle value is zero then something has gone wrong. So we'll create a string buffer here to create the error. We can create this buffer to write the error to so we can understand what's gone wrong. We'll print the error before we quit. Otherwise, the device has been successfully found and open and we've been returned a handle that we can use in our future functions. It's important also to create a function to close the device, otherwise we won't be able to connect to it in the future. We just do this here by having the function take the handle, which we've got earlier, and calling DWF device close. Now we're ready to write some tests. Here is a test to measure some voltage. We set up a function that takes two parameters, handle and channel. So the handle is the device handle that we've just got from opening and the channel is the number channel on the ADP3450 itself. This is either one to two or one to four. This function returns the measure voltage in volts. First thing we need to do is set up the instrument using FDWF analog in configure. We provide it with these parameters and then we can read to an internal buffer using the FDWF analog in status. We create a variable called voltage and set this to a double type. 
This is because this is the type of output that we will be uh, getting uh, when reading the voltage from the SDK. Now we can take a sample from the device using FDWF analog in status sample and we pass the output of this into the variable that we just created, setting this to the value of the voltage we just found. Now that we have our building blocks, we can put them together in a function called run. Our run function here first calls the open ADP function and stores the handle in a variable. We're also recording the time so that we can create a file name called voltages.timenow.txt, where this time is the actual current time. We do this so we don't overwrite our file called voltages.txt each time we run the script and instead we create unique file names. This while true loop means this section of the code will run on repeat until the program has terminated. First we measure the voltage using our measure voltage function, passing in a handle and a channel 2. We save that to a variable called voltage now. We print that to the screen and then we write that to a file called voltage now that we've just created up here. This section of code down here just means that when the file is started, it will call the run function that we've just created here. First, we want to test our code on the laptop or computer that you're working from. We don't want to move it to the ADP just yet in case we've made a mistake in the script. So we need to make sure we do file open folder and open the full folder that contains the main.py file and save it. Now we can go down to the run and debug tab here and click create a launch.json file. From the pop-up that appears, we can just select Python file to debug the active current Python file. You'll see that if we go back to the file explorer over here, it's created a new folder called .vscode and created a launch.json file. And in the run and debug tab, we now have this play button. If we go back to the main.py file and click play, you'll see we get an error that says select Python interpreter. When we click this, we're going to drop down menu and we can just choose our default recommended Python installed here. Before we run our file, we want to quit the waveforms app so that the device isn't kept busy by waveforms itself. After that, we can click the play button to run our file and watch as the Python script connects to the ADP and begins printing voltages to the terminal. You can press the stop button at any time to stop this test from running or alternatively type control C into the terminal. If we go back to the Explorer, you'll see that it's created a new voltage file, which contains the list of voltages printed to the screen here. Now that the script is working correctly, we can copy this over to a USB stick to run it from the ADP3450 directly. We need to make sure that the USB device is formatted using FAT32, but be careful because doing this will delete any content that is currently on the USB device. As you can see, I've just plugged in my device here. It's popped up on the desktop and I've copied my main file in there as well now. Returning to our serial terminal, we can now plug in our USB stick and using sudo fdisk with the password digilint. We can now list out all the devices that are available to the ADP3450. Our USB stick here shows as def sda1, that's formatted with FAT32. To mount this to the files available to the ADP3450, 
we can use pseudo mount dev sda1 using the device identifier found here and mount it on forward slash mnt. That makes the files available to us at forward slash mnt, which if we change into the directory and list the contents, we find our main.py. Now we can run sudo python3 main.py, the ADP3450 connects this time to itself and then starts to print out the voltages it finds. We can leave this terminal and unplug our ADP3450 and come back to it later. If we were to close this, that's not a problem. And we can come back later and reconnect to our screen. If we use Control C to end the script and do another LS, we can see that our voltage file appears here. In the next tutorial, we'll talk about how to connect this directly over the internet completely remotely so you can access uh, your files or even change your files or tests uh, from a completely different place on earth. Hope this helps and see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye. Ma